If you, at this level, focus on a spot on your body, you may not see, but blood will move there where you are concentrating. Energy, not only blood, a lot of energies circulating in the body, they will head towards where you are concentrating. Uh, wherever we focus, energy goes. The more energy goes there. The scientists, the poets, um, sometimes musicians and others who have to really apply uh, some intuition, inner tuition, something from higher to uh, come in. Uh, they all have to use the same principle. Welcome again to another exciting edition of our show live on Jan Cosme Foundation and uh, we are into awakening and awareness and today we are looking at a very interesting topic, thought and mind. And when I want to do anything, when I want to go anywhere, um, think of anything, I'm using my mind. But I watched one of Dr. Jen's video and he said we should learn how to detach ourselves from the mind. It's very, very deep. And we have him here this evening for him to explain uh, some of the things related to the mind. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening. I guess you're okay. Surely. Right, we always uh, thank you for your time and uh, this evening as well. And today we are looking at the mind. Mm. And uh, from our previous discussions, you always let us know that um, in a hierarchical order, we have spirit, mind, and body, mm -hmm. right? And so before we, uh, we start, let's look at the relationship between uh, the mind and spirit and the mind and body. Mm -hmm. and then we continue with other things. Okay. Okay. Yes, we can look at mind in relation to spirit, the mind in relation to the physical world. So in this way, mind is in between spirit and the manifest world. Now, the qualities of spirit, um, they happen to be sort of reduced when we come to mind. That is why I, I say it's a step down frequency. Step down from spirit. Like when you have a transformer, the transformer um, helps to step down or reduce the current so that uh, for a purpose, it is being done on a purpose. See? It's not easy for high current to be ut utilized in certain ways unless you step it down. So same way, spirit, yes, if uh, we have a purpose like we want an expression, something um, like the drama we talk about, then the only way is to reduce frequencies so that it appears as if there are things other than spirit. Even though, in truth, there is nothing other than spirit. Spirit is all that there is. But the phenomena, the whole um, arrangement is on purpose by spirit. So that uh, there is an internal slowing down of frequency at a, spot, a particular spot. You see, when you have, like you have your body like this, when it comes to awareness, you have awareness of the whole body. But at the same time, you can choose a spot in your body and concentrate awareness there. 
So there is general awareness all over. But you can also concentrate at a spot Specific. specifically. So the Great Spirit um, concentrates on a spot inside itself. And that spot, that is where the drama goes on. Wherever the concentration goes, energy goes, power goes, concentration of energy goes there. And uh, the purpose is to adjust frequency for there to be things which appear to be other than spirit, but it is only spirit. So it is uh, intentional arrangement to bring about a drama. So uh, in that process, when the great spirit is concentrating at a spot, then that spot, we call it mind. It is another frequency um, created in that sense. So that one will be called mind. But just as uh, you put your mind somewhere and you can take your mind from there, and your mind is, uh, is not uh, localized, it's not at one spot anymore. You relax and your, your awareness is all over your body. So the same, that's why we say, as below, so above. So it is the same that the Great Spirit is also doing. So it also focuses at a spot within itself. And that spot uh, gets a different frequency. See? And uh, that brings about like something else. But it's, there is nothing else. It is only the Great Spirit. Yes. So this kind of thing, um, when it brings about mind, um, that tells you something. That uh, there is concentration makes uh, energy flow. So energy is flowing and circulating around that spot. Even as below, so above. If you, at this level, focus on a spot on your body, you may not see, but blood will move there, where you are concentrating. Energy, not only blood, a lot of energies circulating in the body, they will head towards where you are concentrating. So for instance, if I concentrate on my palm here, blood and energy... Yes, it's flowing there. It's amazing. It's flowing there. If you are on the um, level to see this energy flows, when uh, you are not concentrating, how it is flowing, it is seen. Now, the moment you start to concentrate, then changes start happening. More energy is uh, going there. And uh, in this way, uh, wherever we focus, energy goes there. More energy goes there. So for the sake of uh, bringing about something, like the same thing in this body, if you want a certain result, one of the reasons that we feel pain is a design to catch our attention. When you catch, when your attention goes to where the problem is, energy goes there to help, to solve it. So uh, pain compels you to think of that spot. You see, it's a design so that uh, you let energy go there to do some work. So let's say I have a pain here, yeah. and I, I, I focus more of my energies here. Yeah. Uh, it will get healed very quickly. Uh, uh, faster, okay. yes, to heal faster. Like even when there is infection or something, then uh, you get some sensation at that spot, or some pain, or some itch, or something. Your attention goes there. 
And because of that, blood goes there, the white blood cells, they go there because your attention is there. You see, so pain is actually uh, our helper. You see, it's designed to help so that uh, our attention goes to that spot. You see? So the same way, the Great Spirit is the only one, but when the attention goes to a particular spot within the Great Spirit, and it is done on purpose, just as uh, on purpose you concentrate somewhere and it brings changes there. So certain changes in that spot and uh, it's so powerful that when there is intention inside it, that you, then that is how it is going to be. The same, if you focus on where the pain is and your intention is for it to heal, that whatever is there to be resolved, then uh, it speeds up the, the, healing the healing process. So your intention plus your focus brings about a quick activity there. It, it quickens the activity there for healing to take place. Yes. So, um, in fact, um, the whole universe, wherever attention goes, energy goes there. So when one is doing healing, for example, it is that same process that the Great Spirit is using for this universe to manifest. The mind and then all this drama coming about. The same process you use to heal. Because when you focus on a person, energy goes to the person. Maybe the person is having some pain or some sickness, some problem uh, at a particular spot. So you focus there and then you add intention to it. As you focus, energy flows there. Then intention to clear up whatever is there. So if the focus is strong because you are bringing more energy and the intention is also clear, the intention is also strong, then combination of the two will bring some things to happen and it's a miraculous healing will take place. So the same process the uh, Great Spirit used to bring about this drama, you see, because uh, when you are healing the person, um, there is some shortcoming there, but you are able to bring changes. See, so it's like uh, what is not there. Um, sometimes the person has even lost some tissue, some flesh or something, and you focus. If the focus is strong enough, and the intention is strong enough, then there will be total repair. That means what is not there comes. That is the so, healing. So all these things are they from, from the mind or spirit? You said everything is from spirit and is intentional. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm using... Mind, good. mind focusing. Yes, yes. And so is it from spirit or from mind? Good, good question. Uh, the point is this. The physical is getting the power flowing to bring changes through the mind, but we use the word true. True means it's from somewhere passing through. So it's from the spirit. And the mind is an agency through which the focusing is done on the physical level. But spirit focuses on itself within, a certain spot within itself. And this, uh, then the mind becomes the result, you see, the movement of energy at that spot. And that brings about something that wasn't there. Just because uh, the same thing you are seeing, 
when you are also repeating the process, you focus on somebody who has been injured, that sport he has lost some flesh or something has gone on, you know. So you focus like that, energy goes there and you add intention to it and changes take place and there is healing. So same way, the Great Spirit focuses and uh, that spot uh, changes begin to take place in the direction of the intention, intention behind it. And this is how uh, the whole creation has come about, a drama has come about. So mind, mind, when the spirit focuses and the energy flow uh, results in what we call mind. Then the mind also is just like when you get a child, the child has some resemblance of you. Some of your qualities will be with the child, isn't it? Yes. So when the mind has been made, in a sense, as uh, through the focusing of spirit, then the mind also has similar uh, intentions because spirit is bringing about changes. Then mind also focuses. And mind came about like it's a birth. Uh, as it came about, it also repeats the process by also focusing. And that brings about a manifest world, you see. So the first grade is the mind, and second grade is the manifest world. So the manifest world, nothing will manifest in this world if it is not found in the mental side. So it is the intention inside the mental side. That is, then the mind is focusing externally like this. Just uh, uh, as a child of spirit, it is also carrying the same intentions of spirit to bring about a drama. So mind itself is the first drama thing. And then it also repeats. And then there is this manifest world as a second uh, drama. You see, that is why sometimes uh, when in the night we sleep, sleeping is a pullback into the internal. Internal, I'm talking of mind, you see. So that is the, what we call subconscious mind. And as we pour into it, then uh, we, we don't pour fully out of the manifest. So the mental energy, some is uh, remaining in the physical. Then we pour a certain percentage of it back into the mental, into the internal. And that one becomes sleep. And... Uh, the intentions of spirit uh, may be picked. If one has very good sleep, sometimes you are going back, uh, stretching back, and some of those intentions uh, stay with you, uh, with, with the mind, and as it enters. So the next morning you get up, you are inspired, and you get certain ideas which solves certain things you saw as problems, certain things you saw as challenges, and the answers are with you, simply by uh, passing through the process of sleep. The sleeping stage, we have what we call the brain waves. And the brain waves, four of them, four major ones, and uh, what it signifies is that as you are 
we're drawing back into the mind. How far is your withdrawal? You see, you may withdraw only a little bit, and that's one. Uh, we have what we call the beta waves. That is the one we have in the uh, body, in the manifest. That is a brain wave. Then we shift from it and we go to the alpha state. Then if you pull further away from the physical or the manifest, then you are getting into the uh, theta stage and you go further and you come to the delta stage. And at the delta stage, you are almost completely <laughs> Uh, withdrawing from the physical. And that is where what we call meditations are initiated. You see, when we say you are meditating, in actual fact, your brain wave has gone away from the physical and uh, is almost total. And uh, uh, in this way, you are in the internal side of things. But deeper and deeper meditation will take you even very close to the frequency of spirit because it's uh, like a spectrum. You see, when we say a spectrum, layers. So you are withdrawing, 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 and it gets to the point where you are most at borderline with spirit. And that is where you begin to realize who you really are. You see that you are actually spirit, but you focus too much on the mental zone and the physical zone. And now you are withdrawing from it, and now you are, oh, that is, so it's just like awakening from sleep. The time you are absorbing it is uh, it's like watching a film and you are caught inside a film because there's something interesting Something is going on, catching your attention, so you are so focused. And uh, when you are withdrawing, then gradually you are getting back to spirit frequency. So you until see. you withdraw, you will not know that um, you are getting to spirit frequency. Because I'm asking this because uh, mm. it looks as if uh, mind is over everything. Yeah. Yes, uh, like from the hierarchy, mind is borrowing stuff from the spirit. Yeah. But when you look at uh, at it in the what we see natural things, we think maybe um, mind comes first before maybe uh, the others. And mm -hmm. you also have one of your your videos. You said everything is mental. The whole universe is mental. Please, can you explain this? Yes. Uh, that is on. The, you see, we are talking about when the eye is talking about what there is. It is only seeing mind, seeing the manifest world. So, as far as uh, uh, that, that becomes like the existence, because it's. Uh, is sidelined itself. Mm. You see? It's so absorbed in it, so the whole thing is mind. The eye is the spirit. The eye is the spirit. Okay. But um, when the eye has to talk about anything, it is not the eye that it will talk about because it's not among things to be seen, to be witnessed, to be focused on. You see, it's not among it. So whatever can be focused on is mind. You see, it's mental. Okay. So that is that is uh, the, 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 the the meaning of yes. Uh, and uh, let me also just ask you. just as your eyes cannot see your eyes. It is only the medium of a mirror or something. But if you are living and there is nothing to reflect, 
and you try to see your eyes. <laughs> Impossible. So, um, spirit, when it talks about things, then it's only talking about what is uh, other than itself. See? So, whatever you can describe is other than your eyes. Your eyes are seeing this. Your eyes are seeing that. But the eyes seeing this, uh, what is the eyes? How is it you can see it? It's a medium for seeing, but it doesn't see itself. So uh, when we are counting things we are seeing, we can't count our eyes among it because the eye is the one seeing it. So the same way spirit is, uh, I mean, perceiving all these things through the mind and body, but uh, spirit doesn't see itself. So spirit is not among the things you can experience. It's not among the things you can see. So whatever you see is not spirit. That is why uh, it is wrong to think when you see something and whatever it is, it is that is what I call psychic. You see? Sometimes you say it's spiritual. Spiritual. People call it spiritual. But as long as, far, as, long as you are seeing it externally, it is not spirit. Pure spirit is a different thing altogether. You know, it's a, an inward experience which uh, goes beyond perceptions, external perceptions. Now, uh, okay, you can ask some more questions. On your mind. Right, you are watching us live on Janko Sweet Foundation. You can send us your comments down below. Uh, we are talking about the mind and thoughts. If you have any questions, if you don't understand anything, please let us know so that we can answer. Please continue. For us. Yes. Um, certain attributes of the mind, I can give you examples that will help you to get it clearer. The attributes of the mind. Let us look at the ocean. Very huge expanse of water. And uh, in the very center or middle part of this water ocean, it has some kind of cool presence calm, like that. Now, when you are getting nearer and nearer to land, where there is land, the shore, then there rises, begin to rise some waves. And it begins very softly, and then as it's drawing nearer to the ocean, to the land, then it picks momentum, it picks force. But when it is beginning, it's not so much force, it's something you see it starting like that, like that, like that, like that. Then it goes forward and forward and it gets more boisterous, more forceful. Okay. And then as it gets to the land, it stretches onto the land. And then it withdraws from the land. And then it goes again. Now, this, all these things are repeating what is on high. See, like I said, when you give birth, your child may resemble you. Yeah, you're supposed to. And certain qualities you have, a child may have. The same way, same way that uh, the ocean, yes, its nature, part of its nature is picked by the water coming to the shore. It carries it all the way and uh, um, there's something wonderful. Whilst the inside 
of the ocean has some coolness, very peaceful. Deep, 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 deep is very peaceful. Now, as you come to the shore, it is different. So even though the water has qualities, the, the water at the shore has qualities of the ocean, but there are some things also different at the same time. So mind has some qualities of spirit, but it also has some difference. You see, and this is where uh, it brings about all this drama. Now, let's look at the inside of the ocean as spirit, the shore as mind, and then the earth as the manifest world. So the Water at the ocean, at the shore, is mediating between the land and then the, the ocean. You see, it's mediating between. Now, the very portion of the water at the ocean which stretches onto the land is very, very active. It goes this way then it comes this way, it goes, then it comes this way. So, uh, you notice something similar to the spirit, mind, and the manifest world. So a portion of the mind uh, which uh, enters into the physical side, it is boisterous. That is what we call objective mind. It is, and you know that mind is always. So that is the shore because it's in contact, coming in contact with the manifest. So the ocean water, which is coming in contact with the earth, with the soil, with the land, that one is just doing the same thing. It accepts the land, and then it rejects the land. It accepts again, then it rejects. So the same thing is going on with our objective mind. It accepts this worldly manifest, and then it withdraws. Then accepts, then withdraws. So if you study the human behavior, you see the same thing going on. Most of the time, you get involved with something, it attracts your attention, and uh, you are becoming involved with it. But at a point, the mind withdraws from it. You no longer need you No sense. longer. And then, uh, again, sometimes the same thing, then withdraws from it, and it looks for another something, then withdraws from it. It keeps doing this, accepting, rejecting, accepting, rejecting. This is one of the functions of the mind, uh, objective mind. So. And let's talk about the mind. Let's see, you started from uh, mm. the, uh, the, the right from the, the water, mm. at just at the point of the ocean coming yeah. here, which yeah. is the objective mind. In the manifest world. Yeah. Let's talk about from the mind to the ocean. Yeah. yeah. I'm yes. saying this because I want to get something clear here. Mm -hmm. In our part of the world, we are asked to develop our mind. Mm -hmm. And most of the things we are doing, we are developing our mind through the manifest world. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask if I think maybe that is uh, that is not that good. Yeah. Listening to what you are saying. Yes. So please briefly talk about from the mind going to, to the, the ocean, ocean. Yeah. very good I say the uh, let us come to the uh, quantum side that is much more subtle okay. the elements the molecules the atoms those which went when they come back uh, sometimes uh, not the same because it mixes with the ocean again, and another set of molecules mix 
out and come unto the land. You see, so the part which went and didn't come back is uh, getting more withdrawn back into the inner ocean. But new ones are coming also to the land and they also withdraw and go like this. So that principle is happening with our minds. That is why our mind also keeps changing and uh, sometimes uh, we go into ourselves, we become peaceful for some time and sometimes we get involved again. Now, when, uh, let's say there is uh, um, the dark side of the moon, the dark side of the moon, when it comes, then the tide reduces. So when the tide reduces, it means the force with which the ocean water is coming to the land is reduced. So it doesn't come too far. It just comes a bit and then goes back. Comes a bit and goes back. But when it comes to the uh, light side of the moon, then we have high tide especially by full moon, very strong, it goes far, then it comes. Goes far, it comes. So our mind, uh, there are periods it is calming down. Its involvement with the worldly, with the manifest, reduces. And that is the period we are getting into a sort of meditation because we are withdrawing back into the ocean where there is all the calm, you see. So these cycles of being too much into the world and a period you are getting out of it and slowing down, they come in the human life also, the same pattern, you see. Now the period of the soul, the sp you uh, withdrawing like that, then we say that uh, you are actually returning to your source. See? Uh, but uh, when you get too much onto the land and uh, there is so much force going, that means you are actually becoming more worldly and uh, um, one becomes uh, addicted to it to such an extent that uh, Sometimes we call the person a sleeping soul, doesn't know uh, that it can be calm. For such persons, the emotions are wild. Anger, you know, hatred, <laughs> all those kind of things, you know. Yes, yes. Uh, yes the emotions are, they, they are all the uh, things are driving us onto the land too much, into the worldly side yeah so so now we understand that the mind is part of creation yeah yeah so it's uh, it's just imitating what the spirit has just done yeah so um personally do you think uh, there is the need to develop our mindsets uh, as we do here in ghana um, mm -hmm. like when we are growing up they tell us to learn more things learn more books, learn this, learn this, <laughs> learn this. Do you, do you agree to that? Um, see, material world, there is a polarity, as I have said. That's why I was even telling you, when the current goes this way, it comes back. When your breath goes out, it comes in. So there is all this polarity going on. So every uh, thing that we are doing with the mind, it has advantage and disadvantage because polarity is what we are in. And that's so, what you call the balancing. Yes, once you balance the two, then uh, it is okay. So uh, the mind uh, wants to always explore. See, the, the manifest world is a zone that mind stretches into it to explore. In actual fact, it proceeded from mind, just as mind proceeded from spirit. 
but mind has a tendency of exploring what it what has come from it its own creation <laughs> mental creation but the mind then has a tendency of exploring it and uh, therefore we are learning the very same things created by the mind the mind is now uh, it is like new to the mind <laughs> The mind itself is trying to learn about it. And uh, the interesting thing is that uh, when the portion of the mind that is uh, uh, dabbling with uh, the manifest world is uh, curious and uh, learning and so on, in actual fact, the higher part of the mind if I say higher, part of the mind which is uh, hooking on to spirit, that part tends to look at what manifests from mind and it sees A to Z, everything about it. Wow. You see, this is the interesting thing. It's a, it's a but the portion of the mind which, hook, which enters into the manifest, then become so curious, is confused, what is all this about? And he's trying to know, all the time trying to know, you see. But all is already known by the higher mind. See, that is the tricky situation. So if uh, we talk of um, development, growing, then evolving, what it means is that we um, we, we try to use the higher mind uh, instead of the lower mind. And all the uh, transformation or changes we talk about on the spiritual path is just uh, a shift from the lower mind, which is so curious learning. But the thing it wants to learn is already known on a certain level. So it's just a question of helping so that uh, people can shift from this objective mind and enter more into the higher mind. Even all these scientists, the things they have been able to make, all is coming from higher mind. Higher mind knows the things uh, that uh, one's uh, objective mind so curious and trying to find and um, when they calm the higher mind a bit then they, they, they calm the lower mind the objective mind a bit then the higher mind uh, comes in you see when we are overly occupied with the lower mind higher mind doesn't come in but when we slow down on the lower mind, then higher mind comes. It's an automatic kind of thing. So we, should, we should be slowing down lower mind more often so that higher yes. mind will work for us. Yes. Okay. All these uh, people like uh, the scientists, the poets, um, sometimes musicians and others who have to really apply uh, some intuition, inner tuition, something from higher to uh, come in. Uh, they all have to use the same principle of being able to slow down on the mind itself. And in this way, the, the objective mind, and then this way, the higher mind uh, flows into action. And we become very creative. So creativity all is coming from higher mind. Mm. The lower mind doesn't know what is what so that it can create. It only raises questions, problems, this, that. It has no solution to it. That is why we have this saying that uh, the mind that created a problem is not the mind that can solve it. Yes. So, you need a higher mind. A higher mind. Yeah. And of course, we have lots of videos about 
the higher mind, how the higher uh, mind uh, can you know come on top so that uh, mm -hmm. you, you bring the lower mind uh, down. But uh, doctor, before we move on to our final words and detachments from uh, the mind, if you have let's say any technique for us, um, you said in one of your videos that um, we should think of the present moment. You said we shouldn't um, you know be thinking about tomorrow. Uh, whilst we've not taken care of today, uh, we should take care of today so that tomorrow will take care of itself. Um, I think all these are in relation to the mind. Can you explain briefly? Yeah. Look at the ocean again. Now, there is spirit now getting away from the, the middle part of the ocean, you are entering into the zone of mind. Now you get to the outermost and it is the lower mind. Now the lower mind, uh, the ocean has sh the shores here. It will, if you go far away, you will get another shore there. Isn't it? Yeah. So, shore here, shore there. So, you see that the ocean proper, the, the, the middle part proper is just uh, centered and extended to the land here, far away extended to land again. So, the middle of your body, your very presence, now extension here, left hand, right hand. You get a principle. Same way you have now, which is the middle, past, future, future the oppose. Mm. You see? So they represent the objective mind, the lower mind. Mm. They are extremes, stretched. You see, and they involve the manifest. Just as the extension of the ocean, the extension to the shore, that involves the land. And the other side, the extension involves the land. So the same way our uh, very presence, it has this uh, middle part, which is now, and then past, and then future, you see. So, if you concern with the now here, then it means you are entering into the middle of the ocean. When you concern here, it's just to another shore which is lower mind's activity, involvement with manifest world. If you extend here future, this also leading you to uh, manifest world because you are imagining it future. There's also another shore. But now come to the middle of the ocean and that is here and now. There is no past, there is no future. And that is where you can tune in. That is where you can have connection with the essence, the, the spirit, the deeper side of you. You see? Yeah. Thank you very much. And you are welcome. I prefer, I want us to go to your videos because some of them we need uh, more explanations so that mm. uh, we can understand it. And I think a couple of weeks to you uploaded another one on imagination. Mm -hmm. And you said um, nothing was made through imagination and awareness. Mm -hmm. And it's also very deep. Mm -hmm. I think it's also about the mind and stuff like yeah. that. If you could also explain that. Mm -hmm. Imagination and awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, um, I mentioned something today, that when you focus, then power goes where you focus, energy goes where you focus. 
You see? So whenever spirit focuses, then energy goes there. But I mentioned something that when the focus is there and you add intention, you see, so the intention becomes something you are imagining, something you want, um, the energy is going there to form or to become, you see. So if you are focusing on the sickness of a person, the part where the thing is, you focus there, then you add intention. As you focus, energy will go there, but add intention that you want wholeness, 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 restoration. And when the power is going there because of your focusing, and you add intention, then something begins to happen. And that is how the great spirit has made things become the drama. So there is intention and it is imagination. You imagine it and you focus and energy goes there and the combination of energy and intention, then some things begin to happen out of that energy then begins to mold, begins to form things. All right, final words. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, we are addicted to the lower mind and it makes us think, think of past, think of future, and continuously past, future, past, future. And uh, it, it brings about all these emotions all along. But if you withdraw, neither to past, neither to future, but now, 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 then there wouldn't be any of the emotions which were arising when you were focusing on future and past. Um, there wouldn't be any emotions in now. And uh, if you can stay in that state, uh, emotionless, that is, no uh, negative emotions actually, um, then in natural fact, you begin to attract uh, being pulled to spirit state, that is realizing your spirit again. Because like attracts like. So spirit is neither past nor future. Because spirit doesn't have opposites in its nature. So if you also balance yourself in the now, that period you are in that now, it is not uh, worldly. You are not in the mind. You transcend mind. If you become stable in it, then spirit uh, frequency draws to you. You begin to experience at a point. And that realization finally becomes what we call self-realization because in truth you are spirit. Right, I hope you've understood uh, this uh, Oh, you have anything to add? No, it's all. I think it's right. Thank okay. you very much, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Thank you also for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, watch more of our videos. We have a lot of videos on the mind, spirit mm -hmm. and body. My name is Kogu Kumi. Thank you once again. See you in another one. Mm. Okay. Thank you.